If Jesus came back today would you be ready? Would you be able to say that your heart is firmly set on Christ? Dear listener, time is ticking, time is taking forever, every day that you wake up, would you? It's one day closer to meeting the Lord, it's one day closer to the second coming of Jesus Christ so how do you spend your time? Most of us live relatively normal lives, we go to work, we go to our families. We pursue our goals and personal interests, but how much time do we spend on these things in addition to all that time? Do we really pay attention to how much time you are spending making sure you are ready to meet the Lord? How much effort we both put into building a closer relationship with Jesus Christ, I think. The question I am trying to get at is, are you? Are you really living for Jesus Christ or are you satisfied with living life and just keeping Jesus Christ with everything and everyone else? Are you really living life knowing that coming into our world today, not only are there evil and troubles lurking around every corner but there are all kinds of things vying for our attention and it becomes very easy to get distracted from the things that really matter. However, I firmly believe that in the midst of all the chaos and confusion of this world the peace of God is still calling us the Spirit of the Lord is knocking on our hearts however it is up to us to listen Hebrews 3.15 as it is said today, if you hear his voice do not harden your hearts as to be comfortable or rather to comfortable in rebellion. We become complacent so easily, yes so easily and this world and your everyday life, including your career, being comfortable too quickly can lead to you becoming lazy because if you don't have the fire in your belly to work hard for something, you'll not focusing on the thing and not doing the work leads to less success, less money, less skills, less recognition, but being comfortable in your Christian life leads to lukewarmness, we have to consciously turn our attention to the Lord. We must choose to live with fire in our hearts and know that everything we do is for Jesus. We must make sure that everything we do is for Jesus. We anything you do is to improve your relationship with the Lord. It is to give Him glory and praise. Now it will not always be comfortable to do it at times where it means you have to make sacrifices. Like this there will be times when you have to humble yourself, there will be times when you have to serve. If you are in a comfortable place you will be unable to do any of these, but if you have that fire in your belly that's God in your heart. For there is fire, then your attitude will be one that says Lord, I will follow you wherever you lead me. So remember that getting too comfortable as a child of God is a dangerous thing. It does not mean that you cannot be comfortable, but do not let your comfort mean that working to serve God becomes uncomfortable. Serving in the kingdom of God should be a privilege. Being too comfortable means you make it a inconvenient and dangerous that being ridiculously busy is somehow the way to go. It makes some people feel important. But there's no point in being busy just for the sake of being busy. There's also nothing to be gained spiritually if you don't care about your spiritual life. What good does it do a man to keep working all the time without caring about gain the whole world and lose your soul? This mentality is a distraction for Christians. Walk with God, work, family, friends, hobbies, relationships. No matter what life brings, there is a world of distractions waiting for you in every corner of your mind. There are people who can't even notice that they are getting distracted because they are busy with work. This is actually religious work. It is sad but it is prevalent among Christians that they keep working for God and do not spend any time with God personal relationships are really being neglected while outwardly it looks like you. Again, flourishing because of religious acts and works. 
I know many Christians who do God's work but are actually hungry for spiritual food in their personal lives. God wants us to serve for His purpose, but don't let anything, even religious activities, become a distraction. For your real relationship with God, He wants your real heart wants your whole heart and he sincerely wants whether you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, Lord Jesus. I pray that I Philippians 3 verses 23 to 21 say but our citizenship is in heaven and we are waiting for a savior from there Lord Jesus Christ who will transform our lowly body to be like his glorious body by that power which also enables him to bring all things under himself. Thank you Lord for this blessed and reassuring word that my citizenship is with you in heaven. I am with you Lord and heaven is my home. That is why I understand that friendship with the world is enmity with God and so I do not want to make myself a friend by being a friend of the world and an enemy of the one true God. But I would rather be rejected by the world and accepted by you. Hey Lord Jesus Father, in those moments when I feel like holding on to the things that you are asking me to let go, may the Holy Spirit press upon my heart and remind me of your sacrifice on the cross. Fill my heart with zeal for your kingdom as your word tells me. Father help me to seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. Lord, it may my heart desire, Lord. I pray for a heart to worship like David. I too want to pursue your heart. I too want to worship you in spirit and in truth. Your God give me the three Hebrew boys give me courage. Courage to remove every idol in my life. Courage to refuse anything that tries to take your place in my life. I pray that I will be willing to give up everything for you because you gave everything for me. May I obey your word and take up my cross every day and follow you. Father, I know this you lead me not to a life of comfort, but to a life of sacrifice called to life. I know it won't be easy, the narrow road won't be easy, but by your grace I pray I'll find the strength to press on. I know the path to follow, O Lord. I have all the other loyalties must be forsaken, but I also know that you are far more valuable than anything I have ever lost. Help me to forsake every idol that I hold. Clean up for the Lord. Help me to be one like Abraham provide a willing and obedient heart. I will gladly dedicate my most precious possessions to you and build an altar of worship for you. Everything that I have is yours, so let my body become a holy and pleasing living sacrifice for you and be of service in your kingdom. Set aside for, help me to build my life on you. Even if it means giving up the things I love and cherish, give me the courage to replace the good things with the best, you whatever you call me to do, I can do it happily and without hesitation. Help me not to mourn over the things I have lost but to rejoice over what I have gained. The word says that whoever loves his life will lose it, but whoever what gets lost will find it in the end. Lord lay my life before you, trusting now everything I give up will be multiplied in eternity. Give me the faith to call the course, even if I can't see the outcome. Abraham did not know that you would spare Issa but he trusted that your plan was much bigger than his. My life always reflects that. Willingness to sacrifice everything to follow your perfect will Jesus to do. I come before you with open hands, taking nothing from the one who has all things. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are my savior, you are my shepherd and you are the prince of peace. Lord glory be to the power that enables him to bring all things under his control.